Hi, my name is Rachel Tabak from Washington University in St. Louis, and I'll be talking about theories, models, and frameworks in DNI research. I'll briefly note some terms used in this conversation, introduce the importance of DNI models, then review some tools to help select DNI models, and finally review some guidance on how to use a model in a study. I won't read through these definitions and will use the term model to refer collectively to theories, models, and frameworks in this video. That's not to say the distinctions are not important, and you're very welcome to pause on this and the next slide to read the full text if it's helpful. We use the term construct a lot in these types of conversations, so I wanted to also give a definition and some examples from DNI here. Again, feel free to pause if it's helpful. While it can seem overwhelming to pick a model for your study, overall, the aim is to improve the study and its impact and facilitate study design, conduct, and reporting by providing guidance in a number of ways, including selecting what to measure and how, the implementation strategies to include, how to interpret study findings, and understanding success and or failure of intervention and implementation efforts. A practical reason for why these are important is related to funding. Looking at Enola Proctor's 10 key ingredients paper, a conceptual model and theoretical justification is a specific ingredient for success, but is also evident in several of the other ingredients. So, given the importance of including a model in your study, how do you select one? The short answer is, I don't know, and it depends. There are a lot of things to consider, but like with most design decisions, the first are the research question and current state of the literature. I'm not going to go into an exhaustive discussion of selecting a model. Rather, I'll highlight a few resources that aim to organize models based on several criteria to help narrow down your choice. This resource characterizes models on several buckets, which can be useful as a way to start matching your model to the purpose of your study. Identifying these goals can help you understand how a model will be used in your study. For example, if the purpose of your study is to understand the context for implementation, a determinant framework may be helpful in identifying and understanding barriers and facilitators. If the study aims to test implementation strategies, an evaluation framework may be helpful. Like the other categories I'll show, these are not hard and fast rules, but ways to break down and think about how a model works in your study. Down the road in study design, grants, papers, and other communication, this process, process can help you apply the model and justify your choice. A few other categories that can be helpful in sorting through the models are how flexible the model's constructs are, how focused the model is on dissemination, implementation, or both, and the social ecological levels incorporated. Models with broad construct flexibility contain relatively loosely outlined or defined constructs, which give res gives researchers greater flexibility in applying the model across diverse DNI activities and contexts. Because of the greater flexibility, researchers have more responsibility when it comes to thinking through how to operationalize, implement, and use the model. Operational models provide detailed step-by-step -step actions for completion of DNI research processes. This makes these models more clearly defined for a particular context and activity. Models in between these two extremes contain constructs that are, that are more detailed than broad models, but not as detailed as operational models. This makes these models less flexible across all contexts, but more helpful in visualizing the role of the model in your study. Models can also be categorized based on their focus on dissemination and or implementation. Dissemination is the active approach of spreading evidence-based interventions to the target audience via determined channels using planned strategies. Implementation is the process of putting to use or integrating evidence-based interventions in place within a setting. In addition to these categories just described, models can be categorized based on the social ecological levels to which they apply. An additional resource in, in identifying models is a newer scoping review, which identified 159 different knowledge translation theories, models, and frameworks. This website was designed to help search through the available models based on some criteria described. It also provides some guidance on additional questions you, mind, you may find yourself asking, such as, is, the mod, is one model adequate to guide my study? 
In what ways does the model need to be adapted? Are measures available? Are there examples? You can see for, for these models, um, you can search for these models and each model has its own page. Here's an example. Um, the pages include information on how the model is categorized in terms of dissemination and or implementation, its construct flexibility and the social ecological level. If permissions were available, uh, the image for the model is also included, as is the field of origin from which the model was developed. Uh, this page also lists the constructs which are found in the model, and further clicking through those constructs can link you to measures uh, resources if those are available. Uh, we also link to the website um, for the model if, if a website is available, and these often have um, a lot of valuable resources and examples in terms of using the model in your study. Uh, the citation for the original publication of the model is included, as are examples um, of where the model is used, if those could be identified. Another research, uh, another resource implementation researchers can use is the TCAS tool. Um, we, researchers can use those to assess the utilization of one or more theory model or framework for a particular project, and it helps investigators consider, assess the fit, and select models for their study. So let's move on to some information on using a model in your study. Here are a few links to places you might be able to find examples of past or ongoing studies to see how they've described using models to guide their work. Uh, one is, is a link to grant examples, and the other is a journal that publishes a lot of implementation science research and where you can actually search for a model in their um, search and identify papers that have uh, included that model. You can use a DNI model throughout your study, but the earliest phase that you would use a model is when you're designing your study. And this is likely when you're developing your grant proposal. It can then be carried through conducting your study and reporting the findings. Models are used to guide research and help researchers interpret their findings and contribute to the science. Your model should be apparent, therefore, in your design, aims, study activities, selection of measures, evaluation, analyses, and interpretation and dissemination of findings. In thinking about communication of how the model is being used, here are a few common limitations reviewers cite to model use in studies. Uh, a common limitation for grant applications is that a model is mentioned in one section but is not fully integrated across all parts of the proposal. For example, the AIMS page indicates a framework will be used, but then nothing is described in the approach about how. Another example is when the model is not integrated across the proposal. What this might look like is a model is mentioned in the proposal, uh, but sample items for an interview guide are provided and in the approach, and it's not clear how these are linked or informed by that model or its constructs. Finally, reviewers may perceive that you have selected the wrong model for your study. For example, certain models have been categorized as being only useful for certain functions. One example of that is re-aim, which is sometimes thought to only inform evaluation. It can greatly help reviewers if you're very explicit about how you're using the model, demonstrating its appropriateness. In the case of REAIM, this would look like emphasizing its incorporation of inner and outer context and using a figure and citing examples of this can help as well. These uh, bullets are framed a little bit more around a grant application, but this applies to manuscript, manuscripts reporting research findings as well. Clearly tying a study back to the model that informed it helps authors articulate and readers understand how a study builds on and adds to existing literature. So let's look specifically at the first place that your model would appear to guide your study in a grant application, and that's in the AIMS. On this first page, you can describe how the selected model helps in shaping your AIMS, research questions, and or hypotheses. For example, is there previous literature showing the use of your model that will help you in developing the rationale for your study? Are there hypothesized relationships that can be empirically tested? Are there parts of your model, for example, contextual variables that have been used in one or more previous studies and places where gaps remain? Here are a few ways that a model can add to your study's innovation. Does adaptation and or use of your model advance DNI science? If so, how? The DNI contribution could be that adaptation and empirical use of the model. Are you using innovative methods to adapt your model? This might involve engaging a new set of stakeholders to apply your model. 
are you using a model from a different field? Uh, for example, taking a model from business or engineering and applying it to a health issue? This could add additional innovation to the study. Are you applying a model from DNI science to advance a substantive or content area? Even if your model application does not substantially advance DNI science, it may advance science in your substantive or content area. The place in your study that a model is perhaps most expected to be evident is the approach, and in particular, to be tied to the ways in which the model has been described previously in your uh, proposal. Thinking back to the limitations, a particularly problematic one is when the model is mentioned in the aims or significance section, but is not evident in the approach. So you might consider, as you're describing your model and your study, how does the model inform your study methods? Is it linked to the construct you're measuring? For example, context, determinants, implementation, or client outcomes? If so, how? Are you using mixed methods? And if so, how do these methods map to your DNI model? Do your analyses assess the relationships postulated in your model and highlighted on your aims page? For example, how does your model inform the relationship between contextual variables, DNI strategies, and outcomes? How is the model informing the development of interview guides and helping ensure the interviews accomplish the study aims? For example, by focusing the questions on relevant domains. How is the model further used to guide the analyses and interpretation of your findings? For example, by helping with coding and organizing themes. All of these can often be demonstrated more explicitly through tables and figures. One way to help clarify and demonstrate how a model is informing a study in a grant or paper is through tables and figures. I included a blank table here just as a template or example with some possible column headings where you could list rows for each construct. This table suggests providing the construct you're using and the definition by which you're defining it, what measure will be used to assess the construct, at what level that measure will be assessed or that construct will be assessed, for example, provider, clinic, client, and the method or methods, for example, qualitative, quantitative, or mixed, you'll use to collect your data. In addition to tables, figures can also be helpful in describing how a model is used and informs the study. Recreating a published figure and adapting it to fit your own study can help show constructs and relationships. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it's been helpful.